the first time that I saw a record was at a flea market, and it was uh, the Magical Mystery Tour, standard first eye-catching thing, whole 24-page booklet in there, you know, full color, it was gorgeous, I've just never seen anything like that. And uh, I don't know, it's just shaped me since. Uh, I guess I was uh, like 13, and I was an obsessive collector from then on. I have a pretty good record collection, and my favorite one to just put on in the background is uh, Chester and Lester, Chet Atkins and, and Les Paul. But my favorite record that I own was one that my girlfriend got me for my for like Christmas, which is a signed Amnesiac CD oh, by Radiohead. Oh, wow. I was co- collecting records for a little bit, but my player is not that good. But I have In Rainbows by Radiohead. It can't play it, but that's my favorite record. My parents were like super music heads, a lot of classic rock. And then I'm the youngest of five siblings that all love music. So just lots of different kinds of music around the house all the time. Uh, a big early one was Incubus. For me, it was more like my dad and every road trip playing like 80s top 80s hits so for me it's journey uh, i honestly got into it by listening to top 40 in the car on long car rides and i just learned guitar and it went from there i built um um just those four uh, tables worth it, uh, just literally to take to convention so it was just supposed to be a traveling record store and i was doing it out of my apartment while ut was paying me to be a financial analyst and had no idea that i was not doing any of that um <laughs> and uh uh, uh, you know, it, 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 we started in the coffee shop because it was it was more affordable to do so. Um, we we shared this space 50-50 because it was more affordable to do so. And then um, this was the appropriate next step. When I went there the first time that their record selection was super cool and wide and they got like video game music and other kinds of music. So all kinds <laughs> of stuff. A lot of people, I think, probably think of like the music scene as like mini Austin but if you know a lot of the bands, it's, I'd say it's like pretty different. There's like a good ecosystem of like funk R and B bands, and you get some of that in Austin, but not like that's like the main thing here. A friend of mine, uh, who's a promoter here in town, um, had a show in Private Park scheduled, and it got rained out. So she called me while I was at dinner, and said, "Hey, like, is there any chance we could just perform an out? We could, I could like set up all of our PA equipment here at, at, at Alchemy." And I was like, yeah, sure, why not? Um, and then, you know, within an hour, they had set up here, and then we had our first show in here, and it was very successful. So I, I, I um, immediately invested in a PA system, and I had um, um, one of my, my earliest employees tr- trained by a professional to do sound, and now we handle all of that ourselves, and uh, it's it was literally only a few months ago, so it's been quite an insane growth. Well, the band, most of us, at least, well, three out of the five of us, met about two or three years ago, and we kind of all have been in our own journey, and we kind of just wanted to get together and make music and perform live. And I met him first, and we decided that we wanted to make a band, and then slowly but surely Aaron joined us and I think like we just all have like that innate feeling that like we at least want to be on stage all the time and have a good time and groove out it's kind of like why we call ourselves slick because we like to just make slick music I guess I've been to a number of shows at Alchemy and it's just like a really like cool environment there's like they don't kind of like they don't limit it to one style like I saw like an indie show I saw a metal show there and you know we played our R&B music there and yeah it's just really cool spot it's like relatively new i think and it's cool to see like how much it's popping off it's mostly run by kind of students i feel like a lot of the venues are kind of like bars and like you're kind of just like at the mercy of what they want and your pay and like the turnout but alchemy it just seems really natural and i think also being like an 18 plus venue it's it helps a lot they're right in your face it was so nice. It was nice seeing you there. You were smiling the whole time, so that was awesome. Having everybody there support us. Like, it, it's, it's, I love playing intimate shows like that with everybody right there because, like, one, even if you mess up, like, you're there with them and they're kind of almost playing with you, so no one's going to judge you. But on top of that, when you are having a good time and you're jamming, you just see everybody moving with you, and it's very easy to engage everybody. It's really fun. The reputation as a party school kind of gets rid of the pressure of, like, I would say, like, UT and other big schools. And it's, I feel like everyone's kind of themselves. Uh, Texas State, everyone's really nice and chill. And I think that's really good for like a musical environment. My dream would be to turn the, uh, to, to develop a recording equipment or to replace a lot of the sound equipment we have with recording equipment so that we could record and release live shows, which I think would be really beneficial to the artists to be able to have 
um, a, a, a spot to not you don't need to invest in studio time. You don't need to worry about, you know, um, 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 the complications and hellscape of post mixing and paying people to do that. Uh, literally, it would be just like uh, live sets that we could record and we could release for them so that they could continue to um, uh, so that they could put out music at a, a much more affordably and, and, and help get their name out there. I hope that in a few years, I mean, you know, I think we all really love playing together, so I just hope we make an actual career out of it and really – I mean, I'd love to be touring. Ideally, that's what I want to do, and I hope we can all do that together. And I think an advice to give artists out here in this scene, absolutely get to know everybody. Go to every single spot. Talk to the owner. Talk to people. I can't tell you how much it's helped being able to just hang out with people and get to know them and just be like, yo, man, you know, we might, we might have a fun time playing a little show here. And if you do that for your own scene and for people that you go to meet, that sounds weird choppy but basically talk to everybody get to know everybody socialize 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 because that's a great way to network i met these guys like i met like at least jose and aaron like a couple months ago or no like six months ago it was last semester and now i'm here i've played a couple shows with them and they're really awesome so we like it man it's really it really is just about meeting people and talking to people and that will really help getting you into the scene it means everything to us because uh Austin, the, the, the problem with the scene over there is very saturated. Um, it's very hard to get gigs there, especially gigs that you can actually make a little bit of money or have any say on uh, what goes on. Um, having a place in San Marcos with a supportive community and all our friends down here, it's, it's really cool to have somewhere like Alchemy.